Hey guys, it's Ms. Benson. So we're going to go ahead and finish up our discussion about perfectly competitive firms. Now last time we talked about some of the characteristics and how to read the graphs, but today we're going to talk about perfect competition, especially their situations in the short run and the situations they can face in the long run. Now remember, the short run by definition is a period of time where you have at least one fixed resource, where there's at least one thing you're kind of stuck with. But for our notes today, you can kind of think of the short run as like maybe a season. Now do you know any businesses that they're open for the summer but then they shut down maybe for the winter time? Those businesses aren't shutting down for good, those businesses are just temporarily stopping production. They're shutting down in the short run, they're shutting down for a season, and then they're going to open back up in a better season. So let's talk about why businesses do this. Now this short run situation that we're going to talk about and the shutdown rule is universal for all firms. There are four different profit situations that a firm could find themselves in in the short run. They could find themselves earning positive profit, which is great. Now the second situation they could be in is breaking even. Now that sounds bad, but it's not as bad as you think. That means that your economic profit is zero. If your economic profit is zero, it means you're just as good using your resources as this way as if you use your resources other ways. Another way to say it is that you're earning your normal profit, right? Because you're earning the amount of money that you ordinarily would have had in your old situation. Well, if you're not making positive profit and you're not breaking even, then there can only be one other situation and that's a negative profit, which is a loss. But notice how we have loss listed twice here. Situation number three is you're making a loss, but you still stay open. Situation number four is you're making a loss, but you need to shut down. Now again, this is shutting down in the short run. This isn't completely going out of business. This is just closing down for a season. How do you know if you're making a loss, whether you should stay open or whether you should shut down? What's the threshold? Well, here is your short run shutdown rule that is universal for all firms. If you're not bringing in enough money to pay your workers, which are our variable costs, then you should shut down in the short run. So it's all about can you pay your workers? If you can cover your variable cost, then stay open. But if you can't cover your variable cost, then you need to shut down. And we're gonna look at this on a graph. Now, after this lesson, you're gonna be able to look at a graph and you're gonna be able to instantly know which of these four situations a business is in simply based off of the location of their demand curve on the graph. So let's look at what situation number one would look like. That's making a positive profit. If you're making a positive profit, then your average revenue curve is gonna be above your average total cost curve at some output level. So your demand curve is going to be slicing and going above your ATC. If you're earning positive profit, that demand curve is pretty high on your graph. Well, that means that there are some output levels where you're bringing in more money than you're spending. Well, what about breaking even? Breaking even means you're just covering your cost. So we're going to take that demand curve and we're going to have it just skim, just brush right up against the bottom of the ATC curve. It's just touching it. And what this means is at our best possible output level, our AR is only right there meeting our ATC. Now if you're making a loss, we're going to lower that demand curve even more. So if your demand curve is below your ATC, I mean it's not even touching your ATC, that means the money you have coming in is not enough to cover your total costs. Your AR is not enough to cover your ATC. So a loss is when your demand curve is below your ATC. But if you're going to stay open, that means that you can pay your workers. So if you're making a loss and you're going to stay open, that means that you can't pay all of your total cost, but you are bringing in enough money to cover your variable cost. So we're going to have our demand curve now kind of slicing into that AFC, kind of slicing through that space between your ATC and AVC curves. Now sometimes students ask, if you're making a loss, why stay open? What do your workers have to do with all this? Well check it out. If our demand curve is right there in that space between, then not only am I able to cover my variable cost, 
but I'm also able to at least put some money towards my fixed cost, right? Now, I might not be able to cover my entire fixed cost in that season, but at least I'm not going into debt for the full amount. So I can cover my worker's cost and then I have some money left over to put towards my fixed cost. So at least I'm minimizing my debt. Then finally guys, if you're making a loss and you should shut down, that means that the money you're bringing in isn't even enough to cover your workers. So that demand curve is gonna be pathetically low on your graph. That demand curve is gonna be right below your AVC curve. Now remember this means you're just closing for a season. This is like what Carowinds does. You know, they close in the winter time. You can't go to Carowinds in January. But don't despair. It's not like they've closed down forever. They're gonna open back up. So a lot of businesses commonly do this just to reduce the amount of debt that they go into. Carowinds still has cost to pay even if it's shut down. It might not have any variable cost, any labor cost, but they still have to pay rent and insurance and things like that. So they still have those fixed costs to pay even if they're producing nothing. But Carowinds is really not concerned about the debt that they go into in the winter time. Because any debt that they go into in the winter time, they're gonna be able to make that back up and then have money on top of that when they open back up in the spring and summer. So to figure out your short run profit situation on a graph, all you really need to look at is the location of your demand curve. Now let's talk about perfectly competitive firms in the long run. Remember our technical definition of the long run is a longer period of time where no resources are fixed. Everything is variable. Everything can change. Nothing set in stone. So it's a longer period of time. Now for perfectly competitive firms, there is only one situation they will ever be in in the long run and that is breaking even which means that your economic profit equals zero. Why do they always have to break even in the long run? I mean, it kind of sounds like they're doomed. Remember, breaking even is not that bad. It doesn't mean that they're starving. It means they're doing just as well in this situation as if they use the resources some other way. But why does it have to be breaking even? The reason why they have to break even in the long run is because in perfect competition, there are no barriers to entry into the market. And I'm gonna to have to use a picture and a story to explain this. So let's go back to when we were talking about our graph of a whole market and our graph of one individual seller. Remember the graph of a whole market has a downward sloping demand curve and an upward sloping supply curve because that represents all of the sellers and all of the customers in the whole entire market. And then the graph on the right is gonna be the graph of one single seller in that market. Remember they're a price taker, so they look at that equilibrium price, they say that's a safe price, I'm gonna write it on my sign, I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna charge it all day long and never deviate from it. So suppose at this equilibrium price, this particular firm is earning positive profit. Now how do we know that they're earning positive profit? Because look on our graph. Our demand curve, which is our price line, is higher than our ATC at some output level. So it slices and goes above the ATC at some output levels. So this business is very happy. They're like, oh yeah, make a positive profit and they're in a good mood. Well, you know what happens? People in other industries look at those positive profits. So let's say we're in the strawberry industry and we're making positive profit. You know what happens? People in the corn industry, they look over here at us and they're like, ooh, look at all them earning all that money. And people in the wheat and soybean industries look at us in the strawberry industry and they're like, ooh, they're making profit over there in the strawberry industry. Maybe I'm growing the wrong thing. Maybe I need to quit growing soybeans or wheat or corn. Maybe I need to start growing strawberries because that seems to be the profitable thing. So when we're earning positive profits, other firms look at that and they kind of get jealous and they want to earn positive profits too, right? I mean, because that's kind of the main goal. And so what they do is they decide to quit growing corn and quit growing soybean and they decide to start growing strawberries and join the strawberry market. Now, is it easy for them to join the strawberry market? Yes, because there are no barriers to entry into this market. Now, how do we know that there are no barriers to entry? Well, just consider it, guys. How many sellers are in a perfectly competitive market? It's competitive. There's many sellers, right? Like hundreds or maybe even thousands, right? So there's many sellers. How did these people get in the market in the first place? It must have been easy. If it were difficult to join the market in the first place, do you think that we would already have this many sellers? Probably not, because people don't like to do hard things. If something is hard, people tend to not want to do it. If something is easy, people tend to want to do that. 
And so notice how all of these firms are in this industry. Well, how did they get into this industry? It must have been easy to join. So that's why we have many firms in the first place. So back to our story. The corn and the soybean and the wheat sellers, they decide that they want to join the strawberry market. And they do. They stop growing their old things and they start growing strawberries. Now we have all these extra people that are bringing strawberries into the farmer's market and trying to sell strawberries. Well, since we have all of these extra sellers that are selling strawberries, what's going to happen to the supply of strawberries? It's going to increase. We have all of these new sellers selling all of these extra strawberries, so that increases the supply of strawberries in the market. So that means we're gonna shift our market supply curve to the right. Now when our market supply curve shifts to the right, check out what happened to equilibrium price. Equilibrium price went down. I am a price taker. So when I wake up the next day, can I be stubborn and still try to stick with charging my high price from yesterday? No, because if I still stick with my high price, nobody's gonna buy anything from me. When I wake up this morning and see the lower equilibrium price, I mean, I'm bummed, but I have to take that equilibrium price if I wanna sell anything. I am a price taker. So reluctantly, I'll take that price, write it on my sign, and I charge it at the farmer's market that day. Now look at what happened to my demand curve on my individual firm's graph. It's not showing positive profit anymore. Now it's just skimming up against the bottom of that ATC, which means we're just breaking even. That's okay. I mean, we're satisfied with that. I mean, we'd rather be making positive profit, but we're okay with breaking even. But let me ask you this. Is that gonna attract more firms into the industry? No, they don't really want to join the market, all right? So when you're breaking even, that doesn't really entice or motivate other sellers to join the market. Now, what if our supply curve had really shifted a lot and that made our equilibrium price fall even more and our demand curve was such that we were a loss situation, like it went below breaking even? Well, eventually what's gonna happen, guys, if some people are earning losses, some of them will leave this industry and go back to corn or back to soybeans. So whenever people are making losses, that doesn't attract new firms. That actually means some firms are gonna be leaving the market. So when some firms leave the market, so if we have some firms leaving the strawberry market, then that means there's less strawberry sellers. So that decreases the supply of strawberries which shifts the supply curve to the left and makes the equilibrium price go up. So if we're making a loss, some people are gonna wanna leave and that brings us back to breaking even. If we're earning positive profits, some people are gonna wanna join and that puts us back down to breaking even. So if you think about kind of a long-term trend, yeah, we're gonna have different things that are gonna fluctuate the equilibrium price. So at some times we might be earning a positive profit, sometimes we may be earning a loss, but we're gonna kind of hover around breaking even. So our long-term trend line would really be hovering, would really be settling right there around breaking even. So the long run is always about this adjustment process. This is not only true for microeconomics, but we're gonna have a long run adjustment process in macroeconomics as well, which is going to kind of be really similar to this. So the long run is just kind of an adjustment process to these fluctuations. Alrighty guys, until next time, I'll see you.